Our final awardee tonight is Tobin Ost. He's with the class of 1992, and here's his video. Tobin Ost is being recognized as an up-and-coming young alumnus, highlighting his work in the arts. He was nominated for 2012 Tony Award for his set design in the Broadway production of Newsies. Much of his nurturing in the arts began with his elementary and high school teachers at Adrian Public Schools and includes the very significant influence of the Crosswell Opera House and the late Robert Soler while he was an Adrian High School student. After graduating with the class of 1992, Toby studied theater and art history at the University of Michigan, graduating in 1997. He next went to Yale University to study set and costume design, the Art Institute of Chicago, and also Kushu University in Japan. One of Toby's former music teachers, Peggy Sneed, remembers Toby was quite creative, artistic, and very likable. She says he sang, danced, and performed with our little fifth grade show choir group, the Lincoln Upbeats. Our teacher, Barb Swift, says Toby had integrity even as a child. She adds, he especially enjoyed art that moved off the design page and into three-dimensional, bigger-than-life settings. But when Toby connected his art to the theater, things really took off. When the high school did a production of Guys and Dolls, she remembers Toby being right in the middle of things, singing, dancing, and painting scenery, doing it all. John McNaughton, current creative director for the Croswell, met Toby when he was only 18 years old, but already a seasoned set designer and talented painter. He said it was a thrill to work with Toby, and he taught me some quick techniques and very kindly overlooked my lack of skill. He was impressed with Toby's kind, gentle, and eloquent way. John concludes that Toby is a true genius who is following his passion and talent, taking him to the height of his profession. The list of credits for Tobin Ost include many set and costume designs for Broadway, Off-Broadway, and regional productions, as well as significant experience as an assistant art director in the television and film industry. In addition to his nomination for Newsies, recent projects include set and costume design for the national tour of Jekyll and Hyde, recently launched in California and coming in late November to the Fisher Theater in Detroit as well as work on the recently released film, The Bourne Legacy. He also gained notoriety for costumes designed for Brooklyn that were made from trash. Tobin has already distinguished himself among his peers. Toby currently resides in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. He is a son of Larry, Adrian High School class of 60, and Sandra Ost, and a brother to Tim from the class of 1994. Toby, come on up. Has anybody actually wondered why this is padded? I mean, do they give <laughs> violent speeches? <laughs> uh, well, it seems I narrowly dodged having to give an award speech not so long ago. So thanks to my friend and classmate, Jay Barber, wherever you are out there. Uh, as well as the Adrian uh, High School Alumni Association, uh, the foundation for this award, and for putting me very nervously in front of a microphone. Uh, for those who know me, I'm most comfortable behind the scenes, uh, so please forgive me if my oratory skills are not quite up to snuff. As people, I think we're quite simply the collective input and hard work of the family, the friends, and the teachers we have been fortunate enough to be surrounded with, and the resources, experiences, and connections they've provided. So to honor me in this profound way is really to honor so many who have directly or indirectly had a say in any making this actually happen at all. I'm very lucky to have come from not only a family of Adrian High School graduates, uh, but also a family who then became teachers, uh, both in Adrian and the Lenway County School Districts. My grandmother, Mary Ost, who was a teacher in Adrian. My aunt, Beverly Bailey, uh, who's here tonight, an art teacher in Adrian. Uh, her daughter and my cousin, Cheryl Bailey, an art teacher in Onstead. She's here tonight. And my aunt, Sharon Knaus, an art teacher in uh, Clinton, and likewise, she's here. Uh, they are the ones who I thank for the countless boxes of crayons, Cheerios, feathers, glitter, construction paper, 
over the years and the sculptures of instant mashed potatoes and being allowed to use right-handed big person scissors <laughs> when others were trying to get me to use the hateful green-handled left-handed uh, uh, scissors. Uh, a note to the school system, incidentally, these don't work. <laughs> <laughs> If they're still being used, get rid of them. Two sticks rubbed together will cut more accurately. Uh, art in the family goes as far back as my grandmother, Zelma Ross, who's an oil painter, was an oil painter in Tecumseh. Uh, I wish I'd known her better and that she hadn't left so early in my life. Uh, but she lives on in the paintings that are a large part of her legacy uh, and the well-used oil paint carrying case that I still use to this very day. Uh, art in the family even goes as far as my partner, Steve's mother, Mary Jane Oliver, who likewise was an art teacher in western New York. Um, and she carefully and proudly carried this important torch as my aunts, grandmother, and cousin did. Um, with the presence of these people in my life, most of them influencing me well before I even started school, art, in whatever form, was pretty much unavoidable. And thank God for that. Then they're the ones to thank for the perpetual encouragement and help as I grew up. My mom and dad, uh, Larry and Sandy Ost, they helped me to build model dinosaurs for show and tell in elementary school, a six foot long paper mache job of the hut for a science fair. <laughs> and to this day, I'm not sure exactly what excuse I used to connect it with science per se, but hey, A for effort. <laughs> uh, frequently, mom and dad's support was the quiet type that came from simply not questioning what the hell I was doing. Uh, such as building a life-size figure of Abraham Lincoln with a moving mouth that was going to give the Gettysburg Address in our basement, as one does, <laughs> and ruining one of his suits in the process, <laughs> or essentially vandalizing the front of our house weeks before Halloween to create an environment intended to traumatize trick-or-treaters and make candy pails fly. <laughs> so thank you, Mom and Dad, for entertaining every aspect of my young and twisted psyche. Uh, I also have to thank others in my family and friends for making other certain necessary and important connections happen. My cousin Chris Willard, who's here tonight, who made one of my earliest introductions to musical theater by passing along a Jesus Christ Superstar album when I was maybe 11 or 12. It was remarkably profound. And my other cousin, Vicki Sentel, with whom I've seen countless shows in both Detroit and New York, they introduced me to what theater could be. My partner, Steve, who has become a sounding board and a critical eye for most of the stuff I do, the fact that he's not in theater is a complete blessing to me, and the fact that I am in theater is probably a curse to him. I wouldn't wish bad theater on my worst enemy, and Steve's had to sit through some doozies. <laughs> His support has been limitless from the get-go. Uh, retired Adrian teacher Kay Doyle, who incidentally gave me my first stage design on my own, and Chris Schmidt for allowing me their own homes as canvases to paint extensive murals in. Uh, and of course, Mr. Robert Soler, uh, who you saw in the video, who, although not an official teacher in the Adrian School system, championed the efforts of decades worth of students and school productions and instilled a passion and worth e work ethic around theater in our community. I think it's, uh, think of the countless high school and middle school shows he oversaw, and it's staggering to conceive of the impact he had on students and on the Adrian Public Schools. And now theater and arts, uh, theater and arts in Adrian are largely being helmed by the powerhouse Julie, Judy Dolan, who incidentally also had a big influence on me. While I never actually ha was a student of hers, I had the distinct honor of touring the school system in a drug-free initiative, dancing on stage in front of elementary school students dressed in an owl costume. <laughs> I think that it was shortly after that that I realized my place was actually behind the scenes. These people have all been a part of my education, even if it was outside of the classroom. Which leads me to my teachers and instructors in the classroom, in the Adrian Public uh, School System, Lincoln, Drager, and Adrian High. It was Mrs. Sneed and the impact of her music class, which is still being felt today. At Lincoln, it was Mrs. Chambers, my first grade teacher, who helmed a class of whom, after 30 years, many of us are still in touch. Heather Yerrick, who's here tonight and also going to be at our class reunion. Uh, uh, we go way back. Um, it was Mrs. Hathaway, for whom I still have an unanswered question that has haunted me over the years. During our quiet reading hour in fifth grade, I had hid a dirty joke book inside a larger book with a far more innocuous title. I got so engrossed in the jokes, I think it was a section involving various things one could do with a cadaver. Uh, I didn't realize uh, her face immediately over my shoulder, reading along. <laughs> or at least this is how I perceived it. But the book was not taken away from me. 
This suggests that either I hadn't been caught as red-handed as I thought, or she knew the innate value of a good, dirty joke. <laughs> I prefer the latter. <laughs> and we were told we could bring whatever reading material we wanted. Uh, incidentally, the jokes have been useful right up to today. Uh, at Dreger, it was my gym teacher, Mr. Hepner, who, between gym class, football, and our class's camping expedition, struck the literal fear of God into me. I think the thing I learned most at Dreger was that I never was exactly going to be a star athlete. That said, I did learn the value of terror as a motivator, and that <laughs> even if you had never, ever been able to climb the rope hanging in the gym rafters, an attentively watching class of over 20 students and a gym teacher with a countenance of the Grim Reaper holding your life in the balance of his clipboard, you can climb up and down that rope several times. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's referred to as performance under pressure. High school, it was Mr. Pryor. I can't say I was thrilled to memorize the to be or not to be speech from Hamlet, but uh, how good does it feel to not only remember it decades later, but to occasionally think about what it means, your understanding growing as you tumble it around in your head every so often. And it was Mr. Hamlin, whose classes in both hand and computer-aided drafting have quite literally been the technical foundation of virtually all I do for theater and film today. It was Mr. Hisong, who, God bless him, put me on stage for the first time and taught the best damn class in acting you could possibly have. Uh, and it was Mr. Theory who introduced me to New York through the Overlanders' expeditions. Who knew that the same Times Square we stood in singing loudly, give, me my, give my regards to Broadway, would be the same Times Square I now pass through every day for work, trying to get around the school groups loudly singing, give my regards to Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I do know this is a dizzying array of names, and there are many others, 18 years worth, and I can only begin to scratch the surface. It's also because of these people that I've taken to teaching myself. Last fall at this time, I taught an introductory class at a small liberal arts school in Pennsylvania, and this spring I'll be uh, teaching as an adjunct professor at Temple University in Philly. Theater and performance, uh, very specifically among the arts, is collaborative. Each production is essentially a mashup of the thoughts, ideas, and efforts of many people and circumstances. Change one of those ingredients and you're likely to end up with a completely different result. Good or maybe sometimes not so good. How similar is this to our lives? Once again, I've been very lucky to have this particular mix of teachers, mentors, family, friends, partner, that adds up to where I happen to be now and what I hope to accomplish in the future. Uh, I want to thank again Jay Barber uh, for this nomination, uh, and Lisa Wilkie, the Alumni Association, uh, really means the world to me, and also to be considered among these other st stellar, stellar alumni. Uh, I've definitely gone over my three-minute time block. Thanks for not cueing the music or going to a commercial. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Toby, and congratulations. What do you say we give one last round of applause to all of our recipients tonight? Thank you.